People are sometimes surprised when I say that continuous delivery is important for data too. Continuous delivery is an agile approach and so we should expect to be able to inspect and adapt, which is kind of a fundamental principle of agile thinking. That means that we must allow for the probability that our first guess about how our data should be structured and used is probably wrong. If we want the freedom to be able to learn and adapt, we must work to enable that freedom uh, so we can manage our changes to data when our understanding evolves. How can we do that? In this episode, I'm going to describe how to take an evolutionary approach to, to managing data, um, how to automate the processes of data management, and what to test to be more confident that when we do make such changes, that they're gonna be safe and reliable. Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe and then we can keep you informed of the new episodes. If you like the video at the end, please hit like too. And if you dislike it, that's fine as well. Um, in this episode, we're going to talk about versioning data and, and managing data. Um, we want to be able to version everything, in essence. We want to control every bit and byte that makes it into production. Uh, we want to make changes in small steps so that we can learn and adapt and understand the nature of those changes as we make progress. We want to test everything. We want to be able to understand those changes and make sure that they're safe. And we go, so we're going to design in order to be able to support this level of change. So what is it that we want to version? Obviously, the code that we create and then everything else too. Data needs versioning too. It's not really continuous delivery if we can't release because our schema has changed. So, in the context of data, it's worth thinking about what sorts of data we might want to be able to change. The data in production, fairly evidently, but also the data that supports automated testing, the data that supports manual testing, performance testing, migration testing. So where do we start with all of these things? I think thinking from the perspective of the data in production is a good starting place and the other things will to some extent flow from there. Um, so what is it that we'd like to be able to change in production if we are not sure that our data structures are correct when we start out? Well, we'd like to be able to change the records themselves and the structure of those records, both of those things. So structure must be allowed to evolve if we want to work in these more agile ways. There's a great quote from Fred Brooks who once said, as soon as one freezes a design, it becomes obsolete. So if we're to avoid obsolete designs, we must allow our designs to, to change over time. If structure can evolve, we must migrate the data too. For structure to evolve, we'd prefer to be able to make additive changes. Uh, that way, it makes it easier to, to manage all of this stuff. So we'd like to be able to version control things like uh, DDL scripts, migration scripts, delta scripts, everything. There should be no manual intervention involved with the, the deployment and configuration of data in production. We'd like to automate all of those steps. So, we'd like to create automated tests to validate our data with respect to data migration. We'd use, we're going to use database refactoring techniques. There's an excellent book that, is, uh, that I would recommend on this topic called Refactoring for Databases um, by uh, Scott Ambler and Pramod uh, Sadlaj. It's a gr great book and it will give you much more detail than I'm going to go into uh, in this episode. Uh, we're going to be able to version schemas uh, based on, uh, on monotomically increasing sequences so that we can keep track of those. Each data change ticks the sequence. We're going to store the desired schema along with the application. And then we're going to store the current data schema with the version of the data that supports that application. 
So the schema version table or header entry allows us to marry up which versions of the application which it works with which versions of the data and keep track of those things. What then should we do to manage all of this? So let's imagine we've got an application of some kind and a data store of some kind. Uh, and there's a relationship between the two, clearly. Uh, a certain version of the application works with a certain version of the data store. Um, and we need to keep track of that. We need to understand that these two, ver these, these two versions are compatible with one another or not. And so somewhere we need to keep track of that relationship in order to be able to understand it. So somewhere or other, there's going to be a table, a, a, a document, something that says that version I of the application works with version N of the data store. And version I of the, of the application works with version N plus one of the data store and so on, so that we can keep track of what's going on. The simplest thing to do to manage that relationship is to keep the specification of the data, the version of the data store in the same version control system as the application. So the scripts that define that version of the, uh, of the data store are also uh, committed alongside the application. That keeps the, that dependency management problem to an absolute minimum. There's a one-to-one -one relationship in the version control system that defines the relationship between these two pieces. Next is the data itself. So each of these, as, as, the, as the application evolves, there are going to be a series of versions of the applications. And similarly, as the data structure evolves, there's going to be certain versions of those. But also, those data structures are going to contain records. And as well as changing the structure, we also need to be able to move records from one version to another to migrate the data. And that's a different kind of problem. So again, we start off with our application and the data store. So we can imagine changing these, these things together. We're going to change the application and change the data store. And we're going to record that in a script that defines the change. As we change the data store, we're going to capture the way in which it, it's changed in a small delta script. And we're going to keep a record of that. As I said before, sequence numbered. So we're going to create number 76 of this, index 76 of this change. And we're going to keep those delta scripts in the same version control system. If we change the data, again, we can, up, we can add a new delta. Every single time that we make a change, we're going to increment the, the, the specification of that data structure, just the change from each version to the next and keep just those delta changes uh, and, and organized. As we change the application, we keep in track which version it interacts with. Again, we keep all of these in version control together. So what does one of these delta scripts look like? So we're gonna have uh, some instructions that kind of describe the see, this, this change to the data schema. Um, and then some instructions that tell us how to move data, how to migrate data from the previous version of the schema to this new version. So in this case, from, from version 75, presumably, to version 76. In addition to that, though, it's also extremely valuable to add some tests of this migration. Here, you should be looking to test the behavior of the migration scripts, not test the data itself necessarily. So you're looking to try and write some kind of minimal test that's going to assert that the, the script migrates the data in the way in which you expect it to. You could think of this as kind of a data migration unit test. And then we're going to store those, again, in the same version control system as everything else. This way we minimize the dependency management problem. It's very clear now that, that as the evolution of the application progresses, we've got the up-to-date picture of the structure of the, of the data store, the way in which we migrate previous versions to the current version, and the way in which we evaluate those migrations and ensure that they are good. So now we can start to use this information uh, at deployment time. 
at the point that we decide that we want to deploy our system to, for example, a test environment, the test environment will say what version the current data store is at in that test environment. Remember I said before, we're going to keep track in a table in the data store uh, of what version uh, that environment is at. Our deployment tools are now going to examine uh, the, the new release candidate. In this example, this release candidate requires the data store to be at uh, version 80. It's currently uh, at version 79, which means that we're going to apply the Delta script that moves it from version 79 to version 80. So we can play that script and migrate the data and the structure. In production, we can do the same kind of thing. The data store records what version the database is at. At the point that we deploy our release candidate, it takes a look and it applies all of the deltas that are required to move the production data store to the new version incrementally, step by step. So every single change that we make to the structure or content of the database, we implement as one of these delta scripts. Now there's a one more step that we can take. If we are nervous about our ability to do this reliably, we can also, at the same time, create a script that undoes the change that we've just made. So whenever we require a change to our data store, we encode a script that rolls forwards to the next version and a script that rolls backwards from that version to the, current, to the previous version. Now we have the opportunity to deploy any version of any, uh, any release candidate to any environment and it will either roll forward to appropriate the data store to the appropriate point or roll it back to the appropriate point whichever whichever is required this allows us a lot of flexibility the only downside with that approach is if you're doing well you're probably not rehearsing the rollback scripts very often and so most teams usually come to the conclusion that the rollback scripts are probably more work than they want to do and not reliable enough and they'll trust themselves more to roll forwards over time. But it's certainly a useful approach uh, as you're gaining confidence uh, in all of this scripting. Uh, there are several useful follow-ups to, to, to the information in this, in this episode. Um, there's a, a good open source tool called Flyway, uh, which will manage these scripts for you, the roll forward scripts and the roll back scripts. Um, the Redgate uh, product suite aimed at, and uh, particularly Microsoft databases, uh, embodies some of these approaches and gives you some tooling to support it. I've already mentioned the Refactoring for Databases book, which I, I, I recommend again to you. All of this, 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 what I've just described is a deployment time uh, approach to migrating data. You're going at the point at which you deploy your system into test environment or production, your deployment tools are going to execute, the, the, uh, apply the appropriate deltas, rolling forwards or backwards to the right patch level. This isn't always enough. It's possible that there may be some changes that are too expensive to perform at deployment time, particularly if you're operating in a fast-paced continuous delivery environment. And so there are other strategies that are of interest that go beyond just this deployment time approaches. Um, there are times when this kind of approach also gets in the way of kind of live, live de deployment. And so there are other strategies too that are applicable uh, under those circumstances. On the whole, this is a big topic uh, and we'll cover more aspects of this in future videos. Thank you very much for watching.